superpower, what would it be? Would you want super strength? Or would you want to fly? Or maybe even breathe fire? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? For me, it was always invisibility. I was the quiet girl who sat in the back of the class, never answered questions, but somehow still managed to be the teacher's pet. Then my school started this girls club, and I thought, hey, might as well go once or twice, they have free food. And I didn't know anyone there, and I wasn't sure I wanted to know anyone there. But after a while, I wouldn't say we were strangers, but we certainly weren't friends. We had nothing really to connect on. And then they started this thing they called Dollar Days, where if it was under $20, we could make art with it. So over plasticine and pipe cleaners and getting paint absolutely everywhere, we started to become friends. And we really started to talk about things that would just happen to us in our daily life. So problems at school, issues with homework, um, friends issues, fighting, and all that sort of stuff. And after a while, we realized in these problems that we weren't really alone in these problems, that everyone had these problems, and that together we could work through them. So here I was, seven months pregnant, coming into Girls Club, wanting to be a part of this group, having to make this public art piece with them. <clears throat> I was kind of wondering what they thought an artist should be and should look like, especially because as teenagers, they're often you know, caught up in their own appearances. But my main mission here was to infiltrate this group, become one of them, really listen to what they had to say, and, and spark conversations that were relevant to them. But to be honest, at first, they were super shy. I didn't know how I was gonna do this. I was a little bit worried. In fact, I was, I was nervous, for sure. And, you know, I had to get them pumped. Here we were, given this opportunity to make this public art piece that was funded by the city of Winnipeg through the Winnipeg Arts Council. And they seemed pretty stunned. And truthfully, I was too. What the heck were we gonna make together? I walked into this project as a first year university student. My only other experience working with youth was a summer program called Volunteer. I was hired for this project nervous, scared, and kind of excited. I was hired by the Manitoba Lighthouse Program. I had no idea what to expect. The only thing I knew was I would be monitoring bathroom breaks, taking attendance, handing out newsletters, and of course, feeding them food. Please, we all know the way to a teenager's heart is food. Now, instead, I decided to come in with a couple of questions. How do I connect with this group of girls? How can I get to know them and be the role model and the cheerleader that they needed? It was absolute chaos. We were 12 very different people and we all had our own ideas and we had to come up with one idea to make this a cohesive project. And because we all came from different places, we all had different things we wanted to get out of this project and different things we wanted to say. So. And often these ideas didn't really match up. When, in all our ideas, we didn't really want to hear other people's ideas often. And we were all very adamant that our idea was the one we should do. Like Naomi said, it was absolute chaos. As an artist, I strive in chaos. Sometimes I feel like, you know, my art practice is better when, I, when things are chaotic. But this was a whole new level. It was out of my control and in the hands of these 12 kind of angsty young teenage girls. <clears throat> After a couple of meetings, I gave birth to my little girl, known to us, the Craftastics, as my sidekick, Baby Blank Slate. So here I was, feeling like a teenager all over again, not really knowing how I was going to raise this young thing. So I was calling my mom, Mom, how do I do this? How do I raise this young girl to be powerful, strong, creative? And then the next day, I'm off at Girls Club being that mentor, being that strong person for these girls. So when I think back to those early days when I was trying to facilitate conversations while you know, doing artist um, 
trading cards and blind contour drawings and exquisite corpses and self-portraits. It was pretty crazy. I think back to my mother-in-law walking my colicky baby down the halls of Valley Gardens Middle School, passing me for feedings amongst hot glue guns and needles sticking up with thread in it and sequins and scrap fabric everywhere. So at this point, I didn't know if I was totally sleep deprived and if I could actually pull this thing off. It was absolute chaos. Jenny was focused on dealing with dolls, costumes, and Value Village runs with the girls. Our room, our workspace, let's be honest. It was a small classroom, we shared a cabinet, and 12 girls who each week created a beautiful disaster. When I was working on my own artwork, I started noticing some of the girl issues, the drama, the gossiping, and the struggles that they were facing with their family and friends. I remember a couple of times having to walk up and down the halls with some of the girls just to calm them down. My concern was that these girls were paying more attention to these outside issues than their artwork that we were doing in the classroom. But that was the reason why we're meeting every week, was to talk about these issues and have it be open to everyone. So instead, on those walks, I tried to talk, talk to them to embrace these issues and these challenges and to put it into their artwork. My personal challenge was to somehow take this group of girls, give them a voice, and create a team of friends that could fight together. Somehow, in all this directionless mess, the idea of superheroes came up. You know, everyone wants to be a superhero at some point in their life. And so we figured with this idea of superheroes that we could all be our own individuals and still go in the same direction and create a cohesive project that could fight for something similar. You know, we learned that all of our ideas were valid and that we didn't have to be the loudest voice in the room because together we were so much more powerful. So we created this group of superheroes that we named ourselves the Craftastics so that we could each have our own voice and still work together as a group. Phase one complete. The consultation period was done. We decided we were going to make a superhero team to dis to combat some of the issues that we, we faced as girls and women. So we started making our clay and cloth action figure dolls and our hot glued and safety pinned altered value village costumes. I was super stoked. I was in my element now, making art. But I have to admit, I was a little bit I was a little bit concerned about some of the directions some of these girls were going in. I didn't quite get it. Take, for instance, the blondies. Here they were, these two girls working away in a corner of this room, this multi-purpose room, making black cocktail dresses with pageant-like sashes, bedazzled with sequins and rhinestones with kind of bubble letters that say blondies on the front. Not exactly your stereotypical superhero, right? No. Not to me, anyway. But once I heard what their message was, I was totally surprised and so proud of them. They said that if you stay true to who you are and not conform, you can overcome anything. Like, you know, the stereotype that blondes are dumb. Then there was Naomi. Seemingly shy, <laughs> always with her nose in a different book every week. I actually never really saw what she was working on. She was so secretive. She was kind of toiling away, not showing me. I didn't even know she was going to show up the next week. So it's one day I had hired Talia Potash, local photography, photographer, to come down and take pictures of us in all our glory and our costumes. After at Miles Mack School with their cosmetology students there doing our hair and makeup. And there she was, the mass peacock, in her green, brown, and blue, and pink hair glory, ready to fight for diversity and to heal the invisible wounds of her friends who have been hurt by racism and prejudice. This was a lesson for me 
on giving up total artistic control and just let things, you know, let things happen naturally. My superhero is Straight Shooter. She promotes good health to, through powerful and positive activities and demonstrates that drugs and alcohol is not necessary to have a good time. Her powers give youth the confidence to stand up and say no just by being there for them. I had no clue what I wanted my superhero to fight for. A part of me wanted to wait and see what all the girls, their issues that they had picked. And the other part just didn't really know what I was passionate about. One of the superhero can relate with me. Her name is Artista Heck. This superhero fights to end self-loathing, insecurities, and to encourage self-expression that youth can have, and to think creatively. Her powers can frown into smiles and teardrops into beautiful watercolors. The reason that this superhero came to be was because every girl in that group took action to help build this character. What we learned was that some people don't know who they are until somebody helps them out. This moment to myself was the realization that this work, that this group can work together and that we can pull off this project. Within this large group of girls, we kind of broke into our own separate little groups. So I worked with two other girls, uh, Punk Cat and the Golden Defender. And together we kind of just created three superheroes. We didn't really know who was gonna wear which costume until we actually were getting our makeup on. And then it was like, oh, I guess this one fits me. I'll wear this one. So our, we, our ideas that we all pooled were about protecting other people because sometimes people are in situations when they can't protect themselves. So you have to stand up and be the better person and protect them and so that they can protect themselves eventually. This was all about finding our voice because sometimes you have something to say and you really need to say it, but you're scared of what's gonna happen when you do. You're scared about the consequences, the backlash, what people are gonna say. So these personas helped us give ourselves a medium so that we could express ourselves without fear of what other people were going to say and what other people were going to think. So they let us be more personal, more ourselves. Because of this, these were all very personal stories, issues that we had faced, that we were fighting against. It was all very, very personal, and we didn't really want to share it with anyone. And it didn't really click for anyone that this was actually a public art piece and that we were going to have to share these stories until we were actually putting on our makeup. So all of a sudden, it was these stories that we had created in this tight-knit little group of people, and we were going to have to share them with people we had never knew and people we might never meet. And it was, frankly, quite terrifying. So while helping all the girls create their superheroes, I had to make my own. Who was I going to be? Made sense to include baby blank slate, my daughter. So I had to think, what were we talking about in those beginning days? We were talking about body issues and gender discrimination, amongst other things. And I realized that these issues that they had addressed were not just designated for the schoolyard or the lunchroom. They're real, they're real issues that affect women of all ages. Here I was in my post-baby body. Not not entirely comfortable, you know. And I decided to step outside myself and, you know, just say, okay, I'm gonna wear skin tight pleather pants. Not exactly something that I would wear on, you know, on a Saturday afternoon at the Forex Theater. So there I am. Decide to, you know, wear a tight outfit. <clears throat> And I had to think about, what was my mission going to be? And as an artist, um, you know, it's true that there's not very many women being represented in galleries, that more men are there. And so my, my mission is to end gender inequality in, in the art world. And I wanted to inspire other moms to be creative and to pursue their artistic passions. And, you know, while doing this, you know, I wanted my power to expand minds to be more creative. Almost a year later, 
there was a gallery opening for the Kraft Plastics Agents for Social Change. At this point, our project was left to the reaction of the community. People loved it. The next thing I know is we've been asked for interviews by television and radio. There were articles written about us in magazines, journals, and websites. Naomi and I actually had the honor of speaking about this project at the opening of FemFest. And before long, the trading card decks were being sold outside of Canadian borders. And presently, we are nominated for the Americans of Arts Public Award. Fingers crossed. I never imagined how much our project would impact Winnipeg or the international community. I am so proud of what these girls were able to accomplish. They created superheroes that are fighting real issues that we can all relate to. My own superhero came alive within myself because this project helped me with my confidence and my leadership skills. I'm not the same person I was when I walked into that door or the classroom that one too. Now I'm an education student, hoping that one day I can encourage students to take chances and join programs that will change them for the rest of their lives, like this project did with us. I wouldn't choose to be invisible anymore. I would have the loudest voice in the room. I was always the quiet girl who preferred her adventures and people and books rather than the people outside of them. And when we started this project, we were just 12 ordinary girls who never imagined we could have a voice outside of our school, our friends. And all of a sudden, we had all of this power that we could express our ideas and show people what we really wanted. Everyone needs a medium to express themselves in. If it's music, sports, dance, or art, like I found my place, everyone needs something like that. Projects like this can change people's lives, and it's not just the 12 or however many who work on them, it's the people that they choose to share their stories with. The final, the final product here. To me, this project represents kick butt girl power created by everyday Canadian girls and women. Its unexpected international success is a response to the importance that girls clubs are, that they address girl issues that, um, such as how the media affects them. And its success is also because you know, it's a response to the institutional gaps and the decline of arts education in our schools. It's a misnomer that art is just a hobby and that there's total equality for women. To me, art is powerful, healing, and absolutely necessary for those who need that creative outlet in order to say what's on, it, what's on their mind. And in our case, a way to discuss the injustices that girls and women experience in this modern world. It was an honor to mentor these girls and collaborate with them in creating the Craftastics trading card deck. This art project truly celebrates the creativity, resilience, and diversity of the teenage girls who created it. I am proud to say that it gave the girls a voice to express their views, experiences, and opinions, and the platform to be active producers of their own culture from both a feminist and educational perspective. My hope is that this project will inspire and empower you to be creative agents of social change in your schools and communities. So on behalf of the Craftastics, we challenge you to start a club. Knock on your teacher's door or your principal's door. Ask to get one going. <clears throat> Look for an artist, a musician, an actor to help you with the project, or simply make your own. Write a play, write a song. You know, do a YouTube video. Start a blog about issues that are important to you. It's good for you, it's good for your soul and everyone around you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.